Hey everybody, uh, checking in today from the pasture and we had about an inch of snow last night so I was kind of hoping for some 70 degree weather here in March but haven't really been getting that. Um, Alright, what I wanted to show you guys today was uh, kind of our, our newest innovation in farrowing on the pasture, um, especially during the winter. This can be a, <clears throat> a challenge unless you have a a nice barn facility and all that fun stuff which we do not um, and you know if you're committed to a pasture system you know how do you um, make that work with a centralized facility so other issues for other days but what I wanted to show you here is uh, what we're experimenting with now and have had pretty good success in uh, its short trial run here and we'll walk over and show you what we got and discuss this a little bit more. All right, so one of the challenges we've had with a uh, pasture-based farrowing system is how do you shelter the uh, piglets during the winter? In the summer, it's not as much of a problem when the sow can just build her nest in a shady spot in the woods and uh, you know a little bit of hay and she's good to go. Uh, and we can you know, hang a tarp over her in case a rain comes or so on. Um, but even that you know, has some challenges with uh, piglets wandering off or maybe other sows coming over and interfering with her. Um, you know, if that sow picks a, a poor spot to farrow in, in a kind of a high traffic area. And winter is especially challenging because you have elements of cold, wind, snow, and so on. So, you know, depending on where you are, you probably experience these problems as well. We've tried a lot of different types of shelters um, for the sows um, over the years and all of them seem to have problems in, in one facet or another. Uh, we tried some uh, calf hutches and A, the wind would blow them away, the sows would flip them over, or three or four sows would try to pack themselves into one of them and uh, that frankly turned out to be a disaster. Um, we did have a couple of the multi-calf type hutches that are, you know that are large and those work pretty well but they're very expensive for about seven eight hundred dollars a piece um, we were fortunate to get two given to us and, and they worked out great but that cost is just simply too much to get 20 of them uh, that we needed um, other things we tried if you watched the video last fall we had the uh the tent shelters that we put over some farrowing hogs and those worked really well there, uh, no complaints, but when we tried that with other sets, the sows ripped the tarps down to try to use them for bedding material, and it just didn't work. So we needed to move on to something else. Um, so that has led us to what you see behind me. Um, these are a custom designed farrowing shelter that um, I kind of came up with, and we've prototyped it over three or four uh, types and kind of worked our way uh, working out the kinks to to what you see behind me here and uh, just go over real briefly how these things work the challenges with a pasture farrowing system is you need to move these things around a lot uh, sometimes farm to farm or a great distance between fields so having a stationary type of shelter can be very difficult with uh, the logistics of moving them. You know, if you only can move one at a time, you're going to be spending all day tractoring those things to where they need to go. So a key feature uh, in designing these was portability. It needed to be uh, collapsible, stackable, etc. so that we could move it. And there are ones out there that are stackable and, and collapsible. Um, you know, with the calf hutches, those are very stackable, but those didn't work. Uh, there's the classic farrowing hut that you see on websites and so on, but they're uh, a, there's no dealer really close to us that had those. Um, B, they're pretty expensive as well. By the time you get the roller bars for the front of them and the and uh, all that, you know, you're probably looking at four or five hundred dollars a piece. Um, and they may work. I don't know. We did not try them, but just from looking at them and filtering that through our experiences, it kind of eh, didn't look like it was worth fooling with. So tried a bunch of different things, and this is where we we're at. Um, these are we built right here on the farm they are optimized to use a minimal amount of lumber um, they're made entirely out of pressure treated that's one thing we did decide to 
spend money on pressure treated instead of milling the lumber, which, you know, we could go either way on that, but, you know, pressure treated stuff is lighter and uh, it's already ready to go and time was kind of a crit critical factor for us. Um, 36 inch wide uh, by eight foot long sheet metal on the top and uh, they're, they're fairly simple to put together once we figured out all the, all the kinks in the process and got our, our cuts the right and angles and, and so on to fully um, utilize the lumber. Uses uh, a full sheet of plywood that is cut in half for each side and, uh, and you know a half sheet along the bottom here. I don't know if you can see this one behind me. Um, the reason we put sheet metal or plywood on the bottom was I know pigs love to mess with sheet metal and it could be a sharp edge to cut on. Um, and then also on the inside with the sow pushing, we wanted something that was pretty tough. So, uh, right here, I don't know if you can see it, this is one that is folded up and uh, collapsed down. Um, so you can see these can stack up four or five high and they can just be moved wherever they need to go on the tractor. That's worked out well. And we'll step around the front here and I'll show you what the inside looks like and show you some sows that have been farrowing um, in these things over the last uh, 24 hours, actually. So here's the interior view of one of these shelters. And it's a two by six um, rib that's, uh, that's cut. And again, you have an articulating joint here so that this unit can fold up nicely. This is a two by 12 front plate on here as well as on the back and the reason for that was to get our roof up high enough um, that the piglets couldn't crush themselves but also so it's low enough in the back it'll discourage the sow uh, from getting too far back there and give those piglets a, a little area to squirt out. The same here in these corners um, the sow really can't get in there so that's another area for piglets to camp out if they need to. Got plywood and two by four sides. Oh, here comes somebody to say hello. These are her piggies, so she's probably waiting for me to get out of the way here. So we'll let her go and back to her babies. So this sow farrowed um, about 12 hours ago, and she's already up and at it and getting breakfast and getting water. So she's a good, uh, a good sow, about three years old. So she's a very experienced animal, which is a joy. So we had three sets farrowed last night, um, 14, uh, 12, and an 8. So pretty good litters. Um, a lot of problems that we've been experiencing did not happen here. Um, with piglets wandering away from the nest is a big one. Um, crushing, of course, can be another one. And um, we really didn't see that here. So we'll take a look at this mama. Oh, you're all right. So I like to have the sow, you know, a little bit aggressive, not uh, where she's going to come out and bite me. But, you know, a good wolf or two is enough to keep other sows away and certainly any predator that might try to get a, a big idea. But you can see in here. All right, hope you enjoyed the tour here of this um, pasture farrowing setup. I think somebody got stepped on. Um, wanted to answer a couple questions that I see a lot on uh, different forums and we get. Uh, first one is, how do you farrow in the winter without heat lamps? And um, that's certainly a good question because heat lamps are kind of the norm um, in farrowing or heating your piglets somehow. Um, I don't know, a couple ideas on that. One, you, you get a genetic uh, hardiness in, into your breed where piglets handle the cold. Um, I can say that we really don't lose any more piglets in the winter than during the other times of the year um, to cold. It's when they leave the nest and are out in the wet and the cold together. But when they are in the nest with the mother um, under some shelter and dry, 
they're fine. Um, you know, we've, we've farrowed in 10 degree weather uh, fairly regularly. You know, occasionally it'll get colder, but kind of the 10 to 20 degree range is the coldest we have to deal with. And, um, you know, we never really lose one to the cold alone. So I guess my answer to that is you don't need heat lamps if that's where you go with your program. Now, certainly if you brought a, um, a soft, you know, indoor confinement pig and put her out on the pasture and she had piglets, uh, you'd probably lose them all. So it's, it's a, hmm, it's a situation of knowing what works best for you and using that method. So if you need to use lamps, go ahead and use them by all means. Um, but if you don't need to, then don't. And certainly over the course of, you know, several years uh, into your breeding program, you can identify traits of, of um, weather resilience and select for that in your sows. And I don't have scientific proof to back this up, but I am beginning to believe through observation that things like uh, immunological resilience and metabolic rate are also genetic traits that you can encourage in your pigs. And what that means is um, when that piglet is born, it has a predisposition for hardiness in a colder environment. And if that sounds a little bit crazy, okay that's kind of where i think it is but we really don't lose piglets in cold weather unless we really screw something up and um and you know lose control of the situation um let's see other questions you know just how do you do it on pasture uh during the winter um, we use a, a wagon wheel type concept so these um these huts are in a central hub and then we will rotate paddocks around this hub spindle so we can get about eight moves around this one spot. And that works out pretty well for a farrowing set that ideally you bring them into that first spot right when they're about to farrow. Um, they drop their piggies. You do your seven, eight rotations around with one move per week. And at uh, about the time that you'll be weaning off your piggies and the sows can uh, you know, go back into a rotation through the woods or elsewhere on the pasture. But it's difficult to move, I would say, anything younger than three-week-old piglets uh, from a nest to a new nest. It can be done, but it's a real pain in the butt. And if you can avoid having to do that, that's the best. That's ideal. Um, the sow is not going to be too happy with you uh, messing with the piglets. And those piglets will try to return to that original nesting spot. I assume they can smell it and that's where they want to be. And then of course your sow will bust through your fence and go back to be with her piggies. Um, you know, snow, ice on the fence, something you just got to monitor. You know, if you get an ice storm, you got to come out and knock the, knock the ice off of your fence and uh, keep it free and clear. Um, watering, you know, believe it or not, right now our water system is on and uh, working fine because we've had you know, 70 degrees four days ago um, so the ground is fairly thawed out and you can just leave a hose cracked if you get a freezing night on the very end of your water system so that there is water continually um, flowing or trickling through that system at night and that that keeps it flowing you know down to 25 degrees and allows you to use your water system now if your system totally freezes up or you don't have a water system uh, that's when you'll be into tanking water out here. And, um, you know, there's a hundred different ways to do that. But you do need a lot of water for your farrowing and lactating sows. Now, as far as feeding, um, one thing that we do differently than a lot of uh, places that you'll see is we do not put a bulk feeder free choice, however much they want, in with our sows. Um, reasons we don't is it's very expensive. They'll eat a lot of feed. And also they'll eat disproportional amounts per animal. So you'll have um, one cell, you know, a couple cells that'll keep themselves in decent condition and eat what they need. But then you'll have a couple that just park themselves at that feeder and just eat 50 pounds a day and become whales.
So we do continue ration feed even through lactation. Um, and we do pick it up a lot. You know, we go from maybe five pounds a day for a dry animal or pregnant animal up to 15 pounds for, for the sow. So she's getting a lot of feed um, twice a day, but we're not parking a bulk feeder out here and letting them just go to town on it. We are trying to keep control of how much they consume. And that goes with monitoring your sows as well. If they're getting kind of skinny, start giving them some more groceries. But if they're in good condition and they're holding their condition well, don't feel like you need to give them a buttload of food every day because they, they don't need it. Um, also, you know, we're giving a lot of hay as well so they can eat as much hay as they want. Okay, uh, I think that's three questions is uh, good enough. Um, you know, thanks for sticking around and watching this video. Uh, if you have any other questions, uh, please feel free to comment below or send me um, you know, a message and I'll try to answer it the best I can for you. Um, hopefully you learned a little bit something today and good luck with your farming ventures and get out there on the pasture.